Susan Bruni provides insight into weight management and health, contributing personal experience to discussions on the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype. Please welcome Susan Bruni. Hello. I'm Susan Bruni, and I'd like to ask a question, basically. Is your low-carb, high-fat diet killing your naturally lean spouse? This is a question that uh, I've unfortunately been asking myself a bit lately. Um, this is a picture back in the day of the two of us, and I'm wondering if there are people out here who have such great balance between themselves and their spouse. Are you Jack Spratt, or are they? And are you licking the platter clean, but it takes both of you to do it? And what are the problems with that? So who the heck am I? I'm a citizen. I'm basically a novice and a mistake maker. Um, I'm a person who has stumbled into this by various things that I've done wrong. And um, as I started to do things right, I believe, I became uh, a lean mass hyper responder and I was a study participant. Uh, I met my husband working at the hospital as an x-ray tech. He is a lifelong clinical laboratory scientist. But I spent most of my career as an electrical engineer. And he is not here at the conference, but he's sharing his data. Wrong button. OK. So this is me back when I had my healthiest blood work. As you can see here, uh, all the doctors were really happy with me. Um, but you can see here, by the way, that anybody who thinks that the study participants had a healthy user bias, well, think again. Anyway, my um, focus was weight loss. And in 2011, I quit my job. I, I had a very stressful job, long hours, big commute, a lot of stress, and that was what led, um, amongst other things, which was constant dieting, where I would lose weight and then gain it back in a little bit more. So dieting had actually gotten me there, but Gary Tobbs changed things for me for the first time. When I stumbled into the book, Good Calories, Bad Calories, as Borders Books was closing, I was so done with the diet section. But I thought, what? This is the opposite of things that I thought. And then I went on to read why we get fat. My husband, on the other hand, is a lifelong cardio guy. He's a, a, an ultra marathon uh, guy, elite 223 marathon carbo loader. Here he is proudly standing with his box of Aunt Jemima pancake mix in the kitchen. But it was whole wheat, so hey. He's a healthy guy. So for him, he's eating my cooking as I'm going down this road. And we're not worried at all about him because he's not fat. I'm fat. So I have the problem. And he can do whatever he wants to do. So he's eating the, the meals that I cook primarily at dinner, but sometimes at breakfast, and then adding stuff like this. So he, like I said, he's pretty healthy. He's got the whole wheat bread, the nuts, the dried fruit, and he you know, washes it down with some nice beer, organic, of course, <laughs> or occasionally worse. you know. And for him, a lot of times, it'd be in the break room. Uh, everybody brings in the donuts or the, the scones. Those are really healthy. So I called it a low-carb diet, and I consider myself pretty novice, and so I never really thought of it as a high-fat diet. It was just low-carb that I was personally looking at, and it's only recently that I'm starting to question uh, whether seed oils are actually one of the fundamental drivers that eventually makes us carb-sensitive. But I 
would say generally that I focused on subtraction, which most people are instead of addition, which means I hope you're right when you've narrowed what you're eating down. But it was really hard to figure out a fat. I generally used olive oil for cooking, a lot of roasted vegetables, salad. Um, so, you know, I wasn't extremely low carb. So some of the possible problems for a, a lean person is first off, assuming that being thin is healthy. We would go to restaurants and it's like, okay, I'm not gonna eat the bread or the potatoes. Are you gonna eat that? You know, so he's actually, you know, more likely to eat what I'm not eating. Uh, this tweet on the side I won't bother going into, but it, it pointed out the Randall cycle, which I had never heard of, but some of the dangers or possible dangers of combining the carbs and the fats, because those don't really occur in nature except for things intended to fatten us, like nuts for hibernation or milk for fattening babies but I didn't know anything about that. And then are lean people going to hit their personal fat threshold sooner? Um, that's a question that we're starting to, to look at. So this is me. Uh, so I had made some vast improvements from 2011 to 2018. And you can see there my cholesterol number going up and um, my BMI was around 24, so I was doing pretty good. And uh, I still had a few pounds to lose, but I wasn't as strict as I later became. And this is my husband at that time. He went ahead and went into the doctor, which he hardly ever did. And he saw his A1C was at 5.6. Being a professional in that area, he was really aware of the fact that now that A1Cs have become so common, that they've gone to a, a method of testing that is not quite as accurate as the one he was originally doing on patients. So he called Kaiser to find out, and they said roughly it could vary as much as 0.5. So he wrote it off. So, step forward, what happened to me was that I upped my game. I was going on a major backpacking trip, and I wanted to really take it to the next level. I started going to two meals a day, low, much lower carb, and really starting to exercise seriously. I felt like I was in the best shape I'd ever been in. Hadn't been in, to the doctor in forever, and I cut my finger, and it was kind of bad. So I had to go in for wound care, and my doctor is saying, you know, you haven't had blood work in a while. So I thought, okay, here we go. And uh, so I had my blood work done and this is what it was. And uh, I thought, well, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm in the best shape I've ever been in in my life. So what's, uh, uh, I think it must be okay. So I started looking and I found the term lean mass hyper responder and didn't know anything about that. So the second time my life changed dramatically was finding Dave Feldman going on the Facebook group and volunteering for the study because I had all the lab work going back to the 80s because of my husband. Meanwhile, here he is and you can see Right there, there's a little bit of a little bit of a pouch coming out, but he's generally very lean. And he had gone to two meals a day with me, even at that time. So at the same year, he went in and got his blood work done. And the two values I've got in red here show what happened to him when he changed his BMI from 19 to a fat 21. So he has an L LDL of 183, and his A1C is now pre-diabetic. So what's a lean person to do? Which one of these two things do you go down this road? Because I had just learned enough to know that he's likely to become a lean mass hyper-responder if he focuses on A1C. So, you know, we're both scientists 
science type people, so we did a lot of testing. His blood pressure has always been extremely good, and his pulse. He, he did a CAC score. He didn't really want to go into the details there, but I'll just say it is showing risk. But at the same time, we both did DEXA scan and did the VO2 max, and both of us were on the table, oh, you're gonna live to 103. So I love the way these tests, one of them says you're dying tomorrow, and the other one, you're gonna live forever. And uh, just to continue here with some of his numbers, he has a very low LP little a, but his inflammation marker of the CRP was a little bit high. So we turned to the studies. So here's what you learn from studies. Breaking news, all peer-reviewed studies are false, says new peer-reviewed study. <laughs> and unfortunately, this is the sad state of what's going on because of pharma and food influencing these studies. Well, we looked at some headlines and we found that China and India are the largest growth of diabetics worldwide. And they are lean people. And we started looking around at people we knew. Here's another thing, marathon running. It can increase CAC scores. So who knows you know, when this developed? Could have been way back in the day. Or it could be that cardio is really not very good for you. And then, of course, we had to at least uh, humor our doctor with the statins. But the top two reasons not to do it are it aggravates insulin resistance and increases CAC scores, his two big problems. And who wants muscle loss, cognitive decline? And, a, you know, it doesn't help all-cause mortality. I love this quote, and for any of you who have gone down this rabbit hole, you'll recognize the name Peter from Hyperlipid, which particular cancer would you prefer to trade for your heart attack? So we decided to follow the advice of Seinfeld and do what George Costanza did and to do everything the opposite of our natural instinct because everything will go well after that. So here's what happened, he decided to focus uh, on his metabolic health and go with me with a, a low carb, high fat diet. And so his numbers from fall of 2022 until just recently, he is, has lowered his A1C to 5.4, but he's a lean mass hyper responder now, which we don't know. Is that good or bad? So for choosing a plan, we chose metabolic health instead of being focused on the LDL. And to look at diet and exercise, we both added strength training. We're still doing cardio, but we're wondering about that. We're trying to judge by how we actually feel. We say, take it to the lab. This is the lab. And we continue to look for answers. We're really grateful for the ability to use Own Your Labs, DEXA scan, and the face group. We just keep eating up the YouTubes and reading books, but you gotta stay open-minded. So I know everybody wants to talk about N equals one. We're N equals two. <laughs> So are my recommendations still killing my naturally lean spouse? I don't know. And that's why we need this, this study, more studies like it, and why we all need to keep donating to the Citizen Science Foundation. Thank you.